What's going on guys, this is Vincent, but for now you can call me Professor Koo. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the upcoming NBA season, split up between the Eastern and the Western Conference. So for this video, I'm gonna talk about the upcoming rookies on the Eastern side. So the first player I'm gonna talk about is the Bobcats first pick, Michael Kidd Gilchrist. He's a freshman small forward coming out of Kentucky. So during his college run last year, you definitely saw flashes of brilliance and you saw his talent and skill come to play but still being a freshman, you could definitely tell the lack of playing time coming out with his inability to put it right there uh, when the game was definitely on the line. Um, he and his running mate, Anthony Davis, who got picked by New Orleans, definitely formed a real nice front court defensive team. And that is something he will definitely bring to the Bobcats and is desperately, desperately needed in that team. Uh, the one place that I believe he will definitely grow is again because of his young age and also is a little bit less developed in the offensive set especially in the NBA game versus the defensive set where that's more instinctual uh, offensive game is definitely more uh, building up your your style your strength and also getting in that tempo of uh, the NBA game uh, the defense will kind of bring itself just as long as it gets a little more strength uh, builds up that you know nice athletic build that he's got real long legs uh, real long arms uh, definitely can provide defense right away and then bring up that offensive skill so he's definitely one I'm gonna be looking forward to when the season starts the next combo of players I'm gonna talk about are basically to me the same player but going on respective teams they're both going into teams uh, looking to be plugged in definitely into you know pull up the offensive burden of their respective teams uh, they both can shoot lights out they're definitely uh, built for the NBA game, but uh, their shortcomings are very similar as well uh, And I'll talk about that uh, very indi uh, individually uh, The first is Bradley Beal uh, He's a shooting guard or a guard uh, got drafted by Washington Wizards coming out of Florida Definitely has range his jump shot is probably one of the, the best looking ones at least on uh, as far as the rookies go He definitely has the mindset of being a scorer um, and his physical presence is definitely ready for the NBA game. He can, he's very aggressive, definitely can, uh, has no hesitations to pull the trigger when he needs to shoot, um, and he's definitely uh, built already to take up the NBA schedule. Um, his shortcomings is definitely that his size is a little bit smaller than what they're plugging him in, into. Uh, he will be teamed up de uh, in the backcourt with John Wall, which uh, is a more of a slasher type uh, distribution point guard and he will definitely bring up the wing and also take up that you know 15 to 18 foot jumper so that's a real nice combo but that will kind of make their backcourt a little bit on the a little small uh, compared to other bigger backcourts out there in the league with uh, teams like Russell Westbrook uh, taking up you know six seven or six eight uh, it's gonna be a very hard defensive scheme especially when both of these players are below six six so, uh, but their scoring is definitely gonna be not a problem. Uh, he definitely needs to pull up a little bit more on the defensive end, just because of that size differences, but that's definitely something I'm gonna be watching out for him. Uh, and then the second player is Dion Walters, uh, going to the Cavs, uh, coming out of Syracuse. Uh, again, same lights out shooting, maybe a little bit, uh, a little smarter and a better handler, uh, as far as distribution goes, can definitely uh, hand the, the dimes uh, along with uh, taking that scoring load off of Kyrie Irving and then uh, it's it's a nice combination because uh, Dion Walters is a little bit more aggressive than than Irving and and so that could complement the the more commanding style that uh, Kyrie Irving brings to the Cavs and then uh, Walters will just bring up the uh, offensive low, load on the other end so th that's a good combination as well but uh, again, their small size or smallish size for the two, the duo on the backcourt kind of leaves them vulnerable for larger guards to either post them up um, or even just you know take them down off the dribble. Um, quickness is not going to be a factor. Offense is not going to be a factor. They both know how to get their shots off. It's mostly the defensive end. How are they going to handle these larger 6'6 to 6'8, uh, 200 to 215 type wing guard players? Uh, especially if they start backing him down to the blocks so that's something I'm definitely going to be watching out for for those two players in this coming season 
The next couple players I'm gonna talk about is actually got picked up by the same team, uh, and I could see uh, Boston stacking up for the future post Kevin Garnett uh, and Paul Pierce leading the way uh, with Rondo being the face, and that's Jared Sullinger and Fab Mello. Uh, Jared Sullinger is a forward coming out of Ohio State and Fab Mello coming uh, more of a center coming out of Syracuse. Uh, their drawbacks to me uh, are a little bit larger than most others uh, in the top, you know, the first round draft picks, but I think their upside is kind of outweighs some of that baggage that they, uh, they're carrying, you know, going into their rookie season. So Jared Sullinger, um, Definitely had a great career starting off in Ohio State, then kind of fell off. Uh, definitely had some injury problems uh, late in his college career, and that's kind of why uh, he's he, he fell so far down in the first round. Um, still has a lot of potential. His body's perfect for the NBA, large, plays big, very strong, has nice low post uh, positioning, can hustle a lot. Now, how can you actually determine whether his injury is going to slow him down or if it's if that's going to shorten his career no one really knows um, he is a little bit small to be playing a small forward uh, has a strength but then he's not as large or plays big enough to be either uh, a small forward so his quickness is definitely not there that's where the injury kind of play, comes into play so uh, depending on how his health comes out, I'm definitely gonna see where Boston tries to fit him in, whether he fits in right where basically Kevin Garnett was last year or pre in previous years, or if he's gonna be more of that wing player that can you know bring those small forwards down on the block and just punish them down low. Uh, same thing with Fab Mello. Uh, Fab Mello definitely is more of an inconsistent uh, and, and more of an asterisk as far as his potential. He's definitely got more upside, has the, the big size game that can definitely clog the middle. He's, he's got potential to be a, a very big defensive stop, but then because he's very still very new to the game, his both polish and offensive skill is still either being explored or you know getting, getting that treatment. And both, with both big men getting a, a nice bit of time to work underneath Kevin Garnett and his mentality and and bring his energy into the game, uh, I could see that rubbing off really nicely between the two now. How far can they go? That's gonna be the very big question because Boston is, is basically stocking up their front court in, uh, in, in case uh, Kevin Garnett becomes either unhealthy or gets ready to transition over to retirement. So you know this is gonna be the last three seasons for Kevin Garnett, so you're gonna get a, you're gonna get a lot of looks and how Boston is going to try to implement both of these two big men into their system with Paul Pierce and, Ron, and Rondo going forward. So those two people uh, for Boston are going to be the key that I'm going to see whether they're going to be in a transition phase or if they're going to be making a run for that title. So in the last two people I'm going to talk about are two forwards uh, going into respective uh, organizations that are right on the cusp, if not right at the end of the playoff scheme either in this season or coming seasons uh, they to me they're both going to systems that they're basically either filling in for someone who's departed or uh, a player that they've had the organization organizations had for a long time but then they're transitioning into the newer younger players uh, the first I'm talking about is John Hansen uh, coming out of UNC uh, got picked up by the Milwaukee Bucks he's basically filling in the role that Andrew Bogut play for their seasons before the defensive stop in their front court playing the long uh, stopper on the wing uh, and on the blocks and also can help out in uh, you know contend in the goal uh, keep that keep that defense pretty you know tight uh, while their offense gets settled out um, he's still very new definitely has the skill has the coaching um, very athletic so he you know that he's gonna fit in right away to any kind of system but Definitely needs a little work on that offensive side, so he's definitely more in in there for the off, for the defensive purposes, and then hopefully, uh, you know, you know, Monte Ellis and uh, Brandon Jennings will kind of take the scoring load off of him, and then maybe count on him for about 10 or 12 points a night. So we'll see how he develops. Definitely going to look for him to be a defensive stop, 
to try to shore up that front court that the that the Bucks had previous years when Andrew Bogut was definitely you know anchoring that defense. And the other player that I'm looking at is Andrew Drummond from UConn who got picked up by the Detroit Pistons. So basically, he's filling in for the aging Ty, uh, Tayshawn Prince, um, looking for that athletic wing, small forward, uh, maybe power forward who can both do scoring and defensive and, and kind of shore up the, the team uh, from that forward position. Uh, Andrew Drummond in preseason definitely looked great, uh, has potential to be a great scorer and an athlete, has very good D, coached really well from UConn. You know that they're, they're definitely gonna fit into the system really nicely. Uh, just you know, look at Rip Hamilton and in that system, he basically came from the same system. So you know that they're gonna, he's gonna fit in really well. Now, the transition from Tayshaun Prince to him is basically the where we're gonna see the, the improvement where Andre is gonna hopefully jump to that next level. This year is definitely gonna be more of a tutoring session, take him under the wings, see the system, make sure that he fits in really well. Um, and then the backcourt will definitely take, take over for the scoring load, but then he will definitely get more impact in the defensive end first. And then hopefully as they tra transition over to him to be the, sm the starting small forward, you definitely see more of an offensive load be put on him and then kind of even out the team. So well, I'm definitely gonna be seeing if Detroit kind of works him into the lineup either quickly or slowly, depending on, I guess, how Tayshaun kind of takes the season uh, as it comes. So, and there you have it. These are my players that I'm, gonna, I'm looking forward in the East. Um, check next time to see what I think about uh, how I stack them up, how I rank the Eastern teams from one to eight, not necessarily in playoff order, but who I'm looking forward to to see more from this coming season. So I'll check you out in the next video.